Hallelujah! Praise Master Jesus. God has been good to us on this uh, agenda. And uh, God has been carrying us through this fast. And uh, I want to just discuss with you something this evening. Something about value, the value you have for power. This uh, fast is caption, Lord, I need your power. I need your power. People have said it. I cannot say otherwise. I cannot alter it. That nothing on earth is more important than power. Whether it is electrical power, whether it is political power, whether it is financial power, whether what you call sexual power, whatever it is, power is very, very important. Because the man that is in power is the man that is in charge. The man that is in power. I can say that many Christians are roaming from place to place, going from prayer house to prayer house, confused, marriage breaking up because of powerlessness. In many churches today, there's really no power. Prayers are said, but the prayers are not connected to power. And many of us have devised many kind of methods to have things that look like power, but they are not really power. So when Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible was saying something in Joshua chapter 3. Lord Jesus was talking to somebody, the man replied in Nicodemus, said, nobody can do this thing except God be with him. And I've been to places where men and women are trying to do the things only men that have God with them can do. For Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and delivering those who are possessed by evil spirits because God was with him. Now the presence of God with Jesus was what we saw. The result of his presence was what we saw in deliverance, in healings, and signs, and words, and miracles. And somebody wants now to do things that resemble that kind of, that's what is called counterfeit. People are talking about false prophets. I have said you cannot have a false prophet except as a genuine prophet. You first have a true, true currency before you have counterfeit. All those people who are going about counterfeit Fitting the original miracles, can the first can fit the original signs and wonders. They are doing that because the original have been created. And so we see all these kind of people trying to fake power. They fake that they prayed a woman got pregnant when the woman was never ever pregnant. They pray that they got people healed and they arrange the people from back background to come and lie they were healed. They pray that they were able to make a dead man come back to life. It is all fake. It's all propaganda. But all these things are happening to show that power is important. A man in power is in charge. And the countries of all the nations, all the countries in all continents of the world need to discover this. And if you are a man of God, a pastor, a woman of God, hearing me now, I want to tell you that unless you are, you are in charge in the realm of power, on the natural, you are a puppet. And I've seen many believers who are like that. The account you want to read today from Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 will open your eye to some things. In Acts chapter 8 from verse 17, then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given and the lay on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. Now, the, the issue we have here is not about buying God's gift. The issue we have here is that somebody brought money to give to Peter and say, give me this power. Let me give you money. By that, this person knew that money was less important than this power. This man was saying to Peter, I can give you anything. In human standard, when somebody gives you money, it's like he gave you everything in the world. Any man that cannot part with money for a thing does not have value for that thing. Hear me again. 
Until a man is able to commit his money to a thing, he doesn't have a proof that he has value for that thing. For the Lord Jesus Christ even said that where a man's wealth is, dear his heart will be also. So when this man, Simon, said to Peter, take money, that man proved that he knew that the money was inferior to the power. He knew it. And it's a shame that some men of God today are negotiating, devising fraudulent ways to get money. And some of the ways they devise to get money deprive them of the divine power. If you go to that scripture letter, Peter told him, perish with your money. He said, I can see you a prisoner to sin and captive to bitterness. You don't have a share in this ministry. That means Peter was saying to this man, you see, you cannot connect to this ministry because of the kind of life you live. Peter was telling him, sin can be a barrier to you connecting to real power. Bitterness can be a barrier to you connecting to real power. And I can see now why many pastors are powerless, many believers are powerless, many Christians are powerless because they are prisoners to sin. They have been captured by sin, what is called besetting sin. Number two, that they will not let hurt go. They will not let offense go. And if you are not willing to let these two things go, Apostle Peter said, you are not going to connect to this power. But our focus is that a man who was into witchcraft, a man who was into occult, could see that money was inferior to the divine kingdom power. That is why all of the are deceiving us with money. You see, okay, no deceit. To make you rich. Come who will give you power to build a bigger church. Come who will give you power to become famous. Come will connect you when you sing one song as a musician. Everybody in the world will know you. We can make you rich. Come and check it. Because they know that money is inferior. Sisters in the church have been deceived by the, by, by the influence of money. They have abandoned their genuine calling. They have abandoned the truth of the gospel. They went to marry a rich unbeliever. And Satan is willing to allow you have his money. Because he knows that money is nothing. Hey, my God. Today God gave me a revelation. That Simon the sorcerer knew that money is inferior. Money is inferior. Brother, who, who say you are a pastor? You went to take job in the rig. The usual that job came from God. You say it was God's breakthrough. And that job takes you away from the pulpit. And you stay on the rig for two weeks. You come back and after one week, you go back two weeks. And you're still answering a pastor. And don't you think, that, can't you see that it's possible that devil gave you that job so that you will not be spiritually relevant? There are churches in Port Harcourt, they have branches here and there. Most of their pastors are too busy to spend time in prayer. They are planting branches every five, five minutes. But are those branches alive? They are cemetery. They are cemetery. And Satan knows that you can have a building without the power of God inside of it. So we are in Revelation chapter 3 from verse 1. The Lord Jesus Christ called a church a dead church. He said they have a reputation of being alive, but there is no but, but they are dead. They are dead. They, they, they have the name. The name of the church said they are a living church. But go inside, you see dead. That's for believers who are like that. And I cried to that the Lord opened my eyes to see how an awkward man will come and lay that money. He said, I can give you anything. Take my money, give me this power. And I can tell you something, people. We need to begin to see the true value of power again. That is why this fast discussion, oh Lord, I need your power. Oh Lord, I need your power. Because a man in power is a man in charge. 
Spiritual power controls everything. God rules the whole world because he determines who becomes king in every nation. Anytime God wants to take away or any king, he will take away and he will put anyone. Look at the battle going on in USA today. See the battle going on there. The rulers of darkness have manipulated and taken over USA before Donald Trump came. They were shutting down churches, enforcing abortion, forcing Christian businesses to close down, taking money from them to pay for wickedness of abortion and crime. And the world, and the whole world was washing hopelessly. It was when God deceived them and brought him Donald Trump. And the church is trying to breathe again. And look at all the convulsion in that part of the world because they knew the importance of political power. Power. So when a genuine believer is in power, it is gone as in power. And it's unfortunate that most of our brothers who are believers in Nigeria go to, into politics. They forget that this is the present party. Look at Muslims can do anything to collect power. Collect power. And that's why I want to make you understand that this occult man, this wizard, called Sarah Sosara, knew the importance of power. Before Philip came to preach in that community, he had some kind of power. And that is why I keep saying, it is often easier for this wicked people to repent. Because when he saw power, he organized power. Many believers today don't know the value of spiritual power. They don't know the value of spiritual power. That is why you start this year, next year you fail. You are told to fast only seven days. And you are telling me that you cannot fast too. But do you know how many days you have spent in hospital for the past five years? And you paid them money for taking your time and detaining you on the bed. You cannot deny, you say you cannot do without food though. That you must eat food. All the food you have been eating, what did it profit you? Hey, may God open your eyes, my brother, my sister, to see the importance of power. This Simon was willing to give everything on earth to collect spiritual power. To collect spiritual power. Because when you are a father, you have spiritual power. Demonic powers don't push your marriage here and there. It is not easy for someone to smash the son of a man that has spiritual power. Because before that attack comes, the man that has been dropped out would have got the revelation. He will start praying and binding demons that came to steal his son. It is not easy for the powers of darkness to snatch the husband of a woman that has spiritual power. Because before that thing will happen, the woman will have received revelation. She will dismantle all the strategy of Satan in the spirit realm. It is not easy for the, for the kingdom of darkness to stand the wife of a man that has spiritual power. Because before it happens, the man will begin to bind and lose and dismantle the agenda of wickedness. It is not easy for awkward men to take the money of a man that has spiritual power and place it in satanic sanctum to regulate the business and kill the business. Because such a man, because he anointed a caress, that kind of witchcraft and child will not work against him. Hey! Hey! Now I see why the church is so sick. The church is not sick because of false prophets. The church is not sick because of false brethren. The church is not dying because the preacher of the gospel is not the people are not preaching the truth. Let me tell you something. Preaching without power is dead. In fact, it is you will be poisoning your congregation because the Bible said that the letter kills, the spirit gives life. Which time you are preaching the word of God without original power, you are poisoning your congregation. You are killing your hearers. What you're saying to them, just like I say, they are letter. They don't have life in them. They are really killing the people. That's why when you teach people too much doctrine and there's no power, it lost their mind against truth. That has power. Unfortunately, some pastors and some churches, some believers, instead of telling the people to go for God's power, they are telling them to be wearing false prophets. As if he didn't know that Jesus Christ, when he said beware of false prophets, he was telling true prophets to beware of false prophets. The Bible didn't say because the false prophets will come forth, there will not be true prophets. The Bible didn't say because there are counterfeit signs and wonders that the church should be a cemetery. I want to make you understand. There's a real contest going. The occult forces are bouncing back. They are engineering the system are coming back. Finding a way to take away all the ground we have taken. Can you see on our streets today? 
that witchcraft have returned. People can boldly make an advertisement, come and take all court power so you can to build a big church. Can't you see that our, our children are no longer show interest in the church? That the gay movement all over the world is telling people there is no God. Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see we are, we are, we are lost in our marriage, lost in our children, lost in our businesses, lost in our career. Can't you see? When are we going to get up and see the true value of power? The true value of power. As when Jesus Christ started, him, started his ministry, the Bible said when he was baptized, that the Spirit of God took him. He's not telling him to, 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 to build a billboard. He's not taking him to see the king. Bible says still God led him into the wilderness so he can spend quality time in fasting and prayer so he can transform the Holy Spirit he received into real raw power. Say so return in the power of the Holy Spirit. He was the Holy Spirit, but it was when he went to that wilderness of fasting and prayer that the power of the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit received was transformed. The oil was was cooked. The oil was cooked, and the oil after cooking the oil, he, the oil now had power. Have power. So he came back and Bible says signs and wonders are accompanying him. I want to tell you, my brother, you don't need to go to a mystic shop to get power. Hmm. No, 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 no. You don't need to. You don't need to go and act it. You don't need to fake it. The more you fake it, the more you cheat yourself. It is not true that her bread, brother, no. It is not true. Her bread can blackmail you. Her bread can tell people that you're okay. You need to go. So even if you're hearing me and you're manifesting power, that is not enough. And you are consoling yourself. That is because you're teaching truth. That's why people are not coming to church. It's a big lie. Did you teach more truth than the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you teach more truth than Apostle Paul? There are great men of God today who are teaching truth. People, the way this world is going now, we need to connect to real power. That is why we caption this fasting. Oh Lord, I need your power. Oh Lord, I need your power. And I'm encouraging you wherever you are that you, you become desperate. Desperate. You show desperation to go to this power. You show desperation. You show eagerness. You tell God, you can talk to God like this man Simon talked. Father, give me this power. I can pay anything for it. There was this story of uh, the Lord General, W.J. Simon, the man that, that God used to initiate the Associated Revival. The can say he had a, he had a church and the church nothing was really happening and he had gone to some Bible school by Charles Parham and they were telling him that a church needs power, a church needs power, a church is not a place to convince people with intellect. You don't use propaganda and uh, social media and packaging to bring people. You can bring people to church, but if, if there's no power, you are not going to benefit from them, they're not going to benefit from you. So that man, one day, had one thing that kept him busy in those days. It was one hour TV program he used to watch. And the Lord said to him one day, Sean, can you give me this one hour? Instead of watching television, and you use it for prayer. He said, he told God, yes, I will do it. After he had prayed for a season, the Lord came back to him and said, Sean, can you double that prayer for me two hours? And he said, Lord, I will do it. He kept that prayer for some time. They said, the Lord said to him again, son, can you make it, double it again and make it four hours? And he said, Lord, I will do it. I will pray four hours every day. I will pray four hours every day. And he continued to pray. One day he said, the Lord came to him and said, son, I can see you are eager for this thing. He said, Lord, I can die for it. I can die for it. I am not willing to continue on this way without power. I'm not willing to cut down this, this way. We are every now and then. Some of us who are hearing me, you need power. You can't cut not to pay off that abuse, brother. You can't cut not to pay off that abuse, sister. You can't cut not to park from place to place, pastor. You can't cut not to run from house to house, my auntie, because of the attack of evil forces. You can't cut not to drink holy water and holy candle and pack sand here and there to go to make sacrifices and rituals. You can't continue. You need a power for yourself. Show passion for the power like this man called Simon. Show passion. Even though we have always condemned him, but he has shown to us that he has more value for the power than most believers. Do you hear me? Simon still has more value than for the power than most people, Pentecostal believers. The fact that the man was willing to give his money for it is a clear evidence that he knew the value for it. 
So when the man began to pray eight hours a day, that's the Bible say more. That was how the revival broke out. And as Jesus Street is still a global phenomenon. From there, the Apostolic Fame Movement of Portland, Oregon came out. From there, the Assemblies of God USA came out. Most great Pentecostal movement in USA and the world over had their root today from Azusa Street Revival. That man showed passion for revival. He showed passion for the power. People of God, I am asking all of you who are with us on this fast to get up and show concern, show desire. Learn something from Simon Sosara. Learn something from him. Show that you value this power. Deprive yourself of food. I can never stop telling the story of my sister Grace, uh, Grace Obona, the police officer, who had to run away to the toilet because she needed to pray. She felt the urge to pray and she knew that she must pray. She had to stay in the toilet and pray. That is desperation. That is desperation, brother. And this season, I am calling all of you wherever you are. To show this kind of desperation for genuine power. To cry out like a sister of Sosara. Give me this power, I can give anything for it. And if you come to that point, check that what blocked him will not block you. I want to say that, that man was very sincere. But he didn't know that sin can be a barrier. That bitterness can be a barrier. Brother, what sister? Hey, whoever you are hearing me today. Can you check around you so you will not come to the point this man came? Because Peter said to them, you to say to him, you have no share in this ministry because of bitterness, because of sin. Can you lay sin aside? Can you join me a little further? Can you desire more? Can you pray more? Can you prove that this thing, this thing, this thing, you need it? I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. Can you cry out to God? Say, Lord, I need your power. I need your power. Lord, I need your power. When the power comes, sickness will bow. When the power comes, all call people will bow. When the power comes, speak husband will bow. When the power comes, speak wife will bow. When the power comes, all the yoke of causes will be broken. When the power comes, when the power comes, your life will change. Your brain will be unlocked. When the power comes, you can fulfill your destiny. Hey! Power, 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 power. Power from above. I believe in power from above. Power from above. I know there is power from above. I believe. I believe there is power from above. I believe. I believe there is power from above. I said there is power from above. I believe there is power from above. Hey, power. From above, I know there is power from above. I believe, I believe there is power from above. I pray for you, my brother, my sister, wherever you are hearing me today, connect to the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say, Holy Spirit, come into my life now? Say, Holy Spirit, come now. Say, Holy Spirit, I open up to you. I cast out every barrier. I cast out every bitterness. I cast out every hatred. I give up every sin. I lay them aside today. Say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Say, it again, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Come and take your place. Come and fill me. Come and occupy me. Begin to say it. Repeat it again and again. Because as, as you're saying that, the power of God will come upon you wherever you are now. Wherever you are now, the power will come upon you wherever you are right now. Wherever you are now, the power will come upon you wherever you are right now. Yes, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, show desire, show expression. Cry out, say, Lord, I need your power. Say, Lord, I need your power. Say, Lord, I need your power. Continue to say it. Remember, it's your brother, Iman and Jemosu, and P-N-U-R-N-Z-O-N-O-C, plus 234-80-3572-4526. And I know you have connected. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. In the name of Jesus.